Hello, happy Saturday, dear Instagram family. I hope you guys are all very, very well. We're back for another fantastic conversation with a dear guide of mine, someone who I consider a mentor in my life, uh, someone who I'm really honored, really, really honored and grateful to have this wonderful conversation with. It is none other than Kadamba Kanana Swami, and we are really grateful for him to be here, to take the time to join us, to share wisdom with us. He's been practicing bhakti for the last 42 years, and it's really a dream come true to be able to have this conversation with him, to get some insights from him. And while he, we're waiting for him to join the conversation, we're just going to give you guys some shout outs. Lovely to see you. Be conscious. Balai David Yassi. Good to see you. Uh, I'm just checking in. Maharaj has said, I'm in my Instagram. You're not appearing. Let me just check in with him. Hopefully everything's working from his end. But lovely to see you. Andy G. Leka. Krups, Davey, lovely to have you guys all join. Thank you so much. Just bear with us while we're trying to get him to add it in. Maybe you guys can share where you're joining from, how your day has been so far. Have you had a spiritual day so far? Has it been filled with spiritual love and bliss? Let us know. I'm excited also. Kushal, thank you so much for joining the conversation. Really excited to have it. Um, Just seeing, he's saying that he can't see the lives at the top of his screen. Let's hopefully wait and see. Thank you all so much for being with us. I really appreciate you all taking the time to be part of this wonderful conversation. Let us know where you're joining from. Let us know what you've been up to today. Thank you so much, Bisha. Listening to our Japa Meditations daily, thank you so much for joining us. It's so lovely. Rohana, lovely to see you. Alpa, thank you so much for joining. Danishta, thank you so much. So we're just waiting for His Holiness Kadamakana and Swami. Being a monk, of course, there's going to be some technical difficulties, and so he's going to be finding us, hopefully, on Instagram. Lovely to see you here, Liliana. Thank you so much for joining. Yashvini, thank you so much for being here. So lovely to have such a beautiful community joining us for this wonderful conversation. I'm really excited to speak with His Holiness about uh, the meaning of life, the meaning of time, the meaning of relationships. So many interesting things that are going to be up for grabs in our conversation today. But while we wait for him to join, uh, let us know how your day has been. Here in London, we're having a beautiful sunny day and a lot of people are getting out and about for walks and get a little exercise. How have you guys been dealing with the solitude? Let us know in the comment section. Thank you so much for your patience, guys. I really appreciate you all being part of this conversation and being here on time. Let's see if I can find him. So I've just added him in. Hopefully it goes live any second now. He should be getting a request on his screen. He's saying waiting for Kadamba Swami to join. Let's hope. Yes, we've got okay. you. Hey, <laughs> Haribo, lovely to see you. All right, Krishna. Great. <laughs> Technology worked out for us nice. today. It's a great pleasure. Thank you so much for being here, for taking the time. Um, and we have such a wonderful audience. We're excited to hear from you. I thought it'd be nice to first start with obviously giving you an introduction and hearing all the wonderful accomplishments and amazing services that you're doing across the world. Um, for those of you that don't know, His Holiness Kadamba Kanan Swami um, officially started his bhakti um, journey in 1978. So by my calculations, that makes it 42 years as someone who's been practicing on this journey. 
Um, and then he became uh, the manager of so many different projects and slowly has moved into this role as a teacher, as a guide, as someone who's uh, inspiring people across the world. Um, and it's really such an honor to have this conversation with someone who's dedicated so much time on not even just a yearly basis, but on a daily basis, because I'm sure this is probably not the first time you've been live today, or you've probably done some stuff online no. so far. Mm -hmm. Has it been a busy day for you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what kind of things have you been up to? Uh, well, I had my daily stream, you know, mm. every day. At, uh, um, I decided that uh, I'm going to use this lockdown for, uh, for making a book that I always wanted to make. Wow. And uh, but I'm not a writer, you know, like uh, I'm too busy. Yeah, I mm. can write, but I'm too busy. So I decided I'll just get lectures, get them transcribed, and then I'll build on that, you know, and I'm doing that now. And I've given like uh, maybe some 30 lectures all transcribed. It's already like uh, some 350 pages and it's just wow. building up. Wow. It's going to be like... Uh, then I cut it down, then I add things, you know, in the end it will be a book. It's amazing. So, Actually, I've, I've read some of, I mean, you've read to me some of your art, uh, previous works. I remember in Belgium, there was one point where you were reading, and I was still quite blown away. You're quite a good writer. Um, so <laughs> I know that obviously probably just the time factor, right? That just the time. time. Concentration, yeah. sit down. This one is a little scholarly, you know, like, and then the other one is the novel, which I still want to finish, yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to that one. <laughs> yeah. And of course, for those of you that don't know, um, His Holiness Kadama Khan Swami is someone that I really admire for his musical talents as well. And he's released tons of CDs. And if you just check out Google, just type in his name there, you'll find content which is really uplifting, uh, mm -hmm. connects you to divinity, to a higher consciousness. So please do uh, find out more. Um, mm -hmm. But today we had a discussion, or you rather, I sent a video to me yesterday saying you wanted to discuss the meaning of dot, 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 uh, because you said, what is the meaning of life? And it was quite dramatic and mystical. <laughs> and so I wanted to see where the thought for that came from, uh, the meaning of life, the meaning of relationships, the meaning of etc. Yeah, yeah, you know. Well, as I say, it's like we're all looking for for meaning something mm. that that touches us you know it's just like you were talking about music we you know and about some of the albums i did and we did one album together actually you and me and you know i really enjoyed that and that was that's that's a relationship right we have a relationship there in kirtan because mm. to us kirtan means something you know and that's what i it's not just about singing and playing and so on. It's, it's really more than that because it's the holy name and it grows on you. Um, it's way more than music. It becomes some, yeah, you're, you're there going before Krishna, making your offering. And Krishna is at the same time manifesting himself. That's the mystical thing about the holy name, right? You chant the name and that's your offering. And then as the name manifests, there's Krishna and he gives you a darshan. Mm -hmm. And that makes the whole thing like completely magic. Mm -hmm. And when you share that with someone, then that becomes meaningful, right? Mm -hmm. So in this way, um, everyone looks for meaning in life, uh, something, uh, you know, What's a mother without a child, right? The child gives her meaning in life. But yeah, you know, when we go spiritual, that's when we find real meaning in life. It's and, interesting uh, that you're sharing, if you don't mind going back to what you're saying about Kirtan and having a revelation of sort, a darshan. Is that necessary when it comes to Kirtan? Because there's many people who maybe have just uh, a sensation or an emotion that comes out. Is that the same thing? Yeah, it's, it's, it begins like that, you know. Uh, I guess maybe in the beginning we don't have such a, such a big experience, but then uh, it grows, it grows on you. You know, um, my first kirtan was somehow or other, uh, it was part of a jam session. There was this musician 
a piano player, American, named Burton Green, who lives in Amsterdam. And uh, somehow or other, we did a jam session, and I had been in India, and I'd taken a few sitar lessons, and I learned a few ragas, right? So he also played ragas on piano, so we were going to do some ragas, you know? Me on guitar, and with a bit of amplification, and him, <laughs> uh, him on a piano. Mm -hmm. And then we had lots of percussion. So we're doing ragas, and it's, it's really cool. And then, uh, then he says, let's do some mantra. I thought, yeah, raga, spiritual sound from India, mantra, spiritual sound from India, let's go. And then he started chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And, and okay, I was also sing, singing and playing. And, uh, and in this way, uh, we had an experience. At that time, I didn't, uh, I didn't have any, any deeper understanding other than that it was spiritual sound. That much I, I, I knew. And therefore, I knew it's more than just ordinary music. It's spiritual sound. But then over time, it filled in. I got to, you know, I got to know more about Krishna. I got to... I heard so many things about Krishna. I found out places related to Krishna. Mm. And Krishna came to life to me. And then when I chanted his name, then I could also experience more Krishna's presence. So, so it has to grow on you, mm -hmm. this, yeah, this experience of Krishna's presence. Mm. It does require, it, it does require patience. And uh, I think that's something that's, really important especially for anyone that's listening that's new to bhakti new to kirtan that um, you may have an initial experience which is blissful in fact it's more likely than not that you probably did otherwise you wouldn't be listening to this conversation um, but to also be patient with the process and not be uh, an, a, a passionate achiever when it comes to kirtan but rather a grateful receiver that anything that comes any realization or any spiritual thought that comes off the back of it, you gratefully mm. receive it as opposed to trying to passionately go to the kit mm. on that I want to get something from this. Um, yeah, and it... Go on, please. Yeah, I think it's like, uh, like being like in, a, in, uh, in, in Mayapur, when we go to India, we go to Mayapur to the, the birth site of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm. And there the river Ganges is flowing. And then if you, well, it's really nice to, to go into the river. It's warm water and you go into the river. And if you go into the river, along the shore, you have to push your body through the river uh, to move through the water. But then as you go deeper, I mean, if you go too deep, you don't have to push anymore. The current will just take you away. So Kirtan is also like that. In, in the beginning, we tend to think that it's it's our energy that we are doing and it's by our energy that things are going to happen but actually we have to get beyond that and sometimes it takes me a whole hour to get over that pushing energy i'm mm. playing for one hour singing for one hour and then in the second hour i'm actually the current actually begins to grab me and take me away and the kirtan will just yeah. carry me along to wherever it carries me along. Mm. Yeah, it's mm. definitely mystical. It can happen in the first moment or not after 48 hours. Uh, mm -hmm. and it, it's really like that. That I found that um, when it comes to Kirtan, if I'm sitting down, I'm not sitting down alone. I'm sitting with, with me is sitting my past, all my thoughts, all the things that have happened during the day, perhaps, or a comment that someone's made and just sticks with you. And sometimes it can take a couple of hours to get through that. So mm. it's, it's really, yeah, like you're saying, a patient practice. But when you are in the current, you're in the flow. I also want to just give a few shout outs to all the people that have joined us. Thank you so much, Litsa Yoga. Thank you so much for being here. Paolo, lovely to see you. Andy, thank you so much for joining us. It's so lovely to have you part of this conversation. If you have any questions, by the way, then please feel free to drop them in the comments. I see there's one here. Is it when Krishna manifests himself, do you mean through experiencing bliss? I think we kind of covered that, unless you had any further comments, Maharaj. Uh, is, is Krishna manifesting himself by experiencing bliss? Well, we don't, it's, it's not just that, you know. 
um, we just, just, it may not be that. It, it may be we become more aware of his presence and we actually see things more as they are. Mm -hmm. See, um, usually we become covered over by the material energy and all the things that happen sort of begin to enter into our consciousness and they begin and they're like they take a piece of our consciousness and so mm. many things take a piece and in the end there's nothing left but then when we chant at one point uh, all that just disappears and just the mantra uh, so it's not always about uh, great bliss or you know now I'm uh, rolling on the ground, it's just being carried by the sound and just and just really seeing everything mm -hmm. in relation to Krishna and seeing how really behind everything is Krishna. And speaking about the opposite, perhaps, when you're having moments in the kirtan or having moments with mantra chanting that aren't so blissful, have you had moments where you, I mean, I'm assuming so that you've had moments where it's not been so absorbed. And what do you do that at those times? How do you, do you just leave that space or do you have any tips that, you know, people can try and implement when they're not experiencing this during Kirtan or not in that mm -hmm. space? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like uh, sometimes you cannot enter. Right? Sometimes something blocks Maybe, uh, maybe something else happened, and uh, and and maybe in the beginning, uh, we find it difficult to enter, but that's all right. Then then we just uh, we chant, you know, as a practice, uh, just as, uh, and we can appreciate the musical side of things. We can appreciate uh, how uh, the singer puts his heart in there, and we can just just stay on the human level and experience mm -hmm. on the human level. Um, sometimes we go into a kirtan with too many expectations. You know, maybe we had a very good one, you know. Two weeks ago, it was really like happening, and then we want it again, and that never works, right? One mm -hmm. has to see each a kirtan is an encounter, an encounter with uh, with Krishna, and uh, Krishna will manifest on the mirror of the heart, but the mirror of the heart has to be cleansed from dust. So the first thing is. Let the mantra work and let the let the cleansing effect of the mantra happen. We carry so much karma, so many things in our head. The past, the this, the that, it's all there. Knots in our heart. Let the mantra just just have its soothing effect, you know, its effect of cleansing and clearing our our heart, our consciousness. And that will happen. Then, okay, then, then we can start to see Krishna once the heart and consciousness becomes clean. Wonderful answer. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, on a different note, Krishna is asking here, I heard you used to compose songs before you did mantras. Some mm -hmm. were spiritual. Can you share some highlights and their spiritual yeah. meaning? <laughs> well, you know, uh, what shall I say? I had many, many songs, you know, I think I, I really wrote like maybe 200 songs or more. Wow. In my day. Yes, yeah, so I was really a very active songwriter. And uh, I used to have a studio at home and I used to record them. And I had it all on a big reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. And I even had backup and everything. Uh, all demos, right? And then, uh, then when I uh, moved into the temple in Amsterdam, I first moved into the, in the temple in Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. Then I had left my studio at home. Then I came to Amsterdam, 
and then they asked me in Amsterdam, so, you know, if I had any anything. And uh, anyway, so they took my studio apart. <laughs> they took the whole thing, and they used the recorder and this that. But they threw away all the all the music. <laughs> so, it's almost painful to hear. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, I was very renounced at the time. So I just uh, sort of said, well, you know, if that's what the Vaishnavas are doing. Uh, <laughs> but of course, I still remember some of these songs. And uh, yeah, there were different ones, you know, these 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 old, old hungry eyes have told me many lies, but maybe this one time I will be satisfied. <laughs> Let me try again. Uh, and this is before you came into Buck? In, yeah, into, yeah. Oh, wow. Before, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I had, I had a song about my father, you know, like uh, my father was a firefly who burned his wings when he flew too high in the fire of ambition. There's a line people form, wanting more, wanting more, wanting more, wanting more. But not a soul in the world um, can actually ever find um, peace or happiness unless he finds it within himself. Uh, well, you know, many songs, many, um, do you still have them um, written somewhere? No, just fragments in my, in my memory. I don't, I, but it was part of my spiritual journey, mm. you know, when I was, uh, 17, I left home and, uh, I sang my father a song, going away is a part of my life. The life I've got to live, I've got to be the one I am. I've got something to give. And How did he take that? <laughs> he didn't like the song. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> it was a good song. <laughs> it's a good song. Now maybe it might be a thought to, I don't know, whether, again, time permitting to write them as poems or to write them as, you know, whatever is left in the memory. I'm sure that many people would really appreciate them, if not, uh, those that are following you, but those that you know, will re really admire contemporary music or contemporary art in that form. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I don't know if they're written anywhere and you mentioned that they're not, but um, maybe it's a thought to one day, anyone that's listening that's inspired to get these written down and recorded somewhere, I think it'd be a good shout. Um, mm -hmm. I want to ask you a little bit about Vrindavan because Vrindavan is a place which um, is very dear to me and I share to pretty much anyone that I meet within the first hour or so, uh, be it in a yoga studio or be it anywhere that I'm sharing kirtan or otherwise, somehow or other, it always comes back to Vrindavan. And uh, people always ask me, why is Vrindavan so special? And I have uh -huh. my reasons, of course, but I think it's uh, important to discuss this with someone who lived there, who I feel is still living there, at least in consciousness mm -hmm. and thought. Um, and maybe you can share a little bit of the significance of Vrindavan, why for mm -hmm. bhakti yogis, it's so important that place. Um, I was uh, I was in uh, in Holland. I had traveled to India many times, and uh, and uh, because I was a vegetarian in those days, the uh, whole vegetarian scene in my town was uh, was macrobiotic. Yeah. Mm. And so I became involved in some macrobiotic restaurant and, and, and a youth center that was all with it. And they also had this house, which was a commune, and it was totally, uh, totally macrobiotic. There was one boy who was really like very spiritual. And the two of us were like the most interested in spiritual life. And then he, he just joined the Hare Krishnas. So then... I went to, to check it out, what happened, because he just disappeared into the temple. Wow. And uh, just, just like that, you know, like from one day to the next, boom, disappeared in the temple. So, okay, I went to visit him in the temple. And I had a ticket for India in my pocket. And he said, when you go to India, you must go to Vindavan. 
okay, I was, uh, I was thinking that maybe this journey, uh, I would visit some ashrams and places. So I went to different places. And one place I went was the Tibetans in the uh, Himalayas. And just there, um, I, 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 I met someone who gave me a Bhagavad Gita. Mm. And yeah, I read that Bhagavad Gita and there was also a particular incident that made it uh, very interesting. You see, there were these prayer mills and all these Tibet Tibetans were moving these prayer mills in, in circles in the center of town, cylindrical things, one meter and spinning around and a battery of them on one side. They're walking around in circles. So I was sitting there watching then there was this old Lama, so the one I really wanted to meet. And I greeted him. He ignored me totally. And then, uh, that was strange. I thought maybe he's deaf. But he was walking in a circle. So the next time I went really clear, nothing, no response. So I really felt he doesn't want to know me. Then I read the Gita, and I read about impersonalists. And... And I, I, I read how the, the impersonalist experience is limited and how the experience of Krishna consciousness is ever-increasing happiness. The impersonalist is looking for liberation from matter and then he's reached his level. That's it. The Buddhist is also looking for liberation. Then he's reached his level. But Krishna consciousness was eternally increasing. Then I thought, wow then that must be the truth. Mm -hmm. So then I decided to go to Vrindavan. And I went to Vrindavan, and I came into Vrindavan. And Vrindavan, in those days, was more villagey than it is today, because it had only three cars a day. So I was, so was walking on this country road. It was very peaceful. Uh, there were cows, and the cows were going the same direction I was going towards the town. And we were walking towards the town, and uh, it was all so spiritual. And I came to the Krishna Balaram temple, which Prabhupada had constructed, and it was quarter to seven at night. And as I'm coming in the temple, all the people start bowing down to a plant. So I was going, ooh, here we go. And my mind was sort of shocked. Next moment, there was a pujari, uh, a small albino pujari, who opened the doors and blew the conch. And then I saw the deities, and it was stunning. It was overwhelming. And the entire atmosphere in this Vrindavan was so spiritual. I was just amazed. It always felt like Krishna is here, or rather, he was here maybe two minutes ago. Maybe he's gone just around the corner. Let me have a look. Um, Krishna's presence was so strong in Vrindavan. I had no doubt that it was a spiritual place immediately. And everywhere, everyone in Vrindavan was a devotee of Krishna, didn't matter who, from the shopkeepers to the, the rickshaw wallas to but anybody, anybody to the sadhus, everyone was a devotee of Krishna. Everywhere there were temples and the, and in this, and peacocks were seated in the trees, even, even at the side of the road, because there was no traffic. All these things just reminded so much of Krishna that I had no doubt. I had no doubt. When I heard that Vrindavan is the spiritual world, when the devotees told me Vrindavan is non different from the spiritual world, I said, I already, I said to myself, I already sensed it. I already, I, I, I already felt it. I already saw it. So what the devotees said kind of confirmed for me what I felt. Then I stayed in that Krishna Balaram temple. And then in that temple, that was Prabhupada's temple. 
And there, everything, everything was connected with Prabhupada. There was Prabhupada's samadhi, Prabhupada's house. The bell of the temple was ringing on, on the hour, every half hour and during the arti, because Prabhupada wanted that. That everywhere was a spot with a story about Prabhupada. And everywhere Prabhupada had given instructions and so on. And as I stayed longer in Vindavan, I realized that actually Prabhupada was even more present than Krishna mm. in, in this Krishna Bhanaram Mandir. Mm. And so Vindavan did two things to me. It, it made me a devotee of Krishna and it made me really a Prabhupada man somehow or other. Mm. And that's really what I got from from Vrinda, Gurusak, yeah. spoke for one hour. I mean, I'm stunned. I, I didn't want it to stop. I'm, I'm totally entranced to hear. There you go. If anyone's listening and wants to become a lover of Krishna, then you must go to Vrindavan. And if you want to appreciate the wonderful things that A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, as he's commonly uh, named, uh, please do go and visit Vrindavan and appreciate all the things that are happening there that send to you towards uh, this wonderful guide, this once wonderful person um, who in the 70s created a revolution around the world, a bhakti revolution. Um, and it's so wonderful to hear you speak that you become a Prabhupada man. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that this is an interesting topic also because... Okay, I want to say one more thing about please, Vrindavan. Please, please. Yeah. Yes, I can. But so I'm ready to hear it. <laughs> well, what I want to say is this. Vrindavan is a gift of Krishna. And, you know, it is the spiritual world. Krishna gives us the spiritual world in a replica. So it is a gift of Krishna. And it is a gift of the devotees of Krishna. Because it's filled with devotees. And these devotees, they reveal the Dham. They reveal Vrindavan Dham to us. So it's a gift of Krishna. It is the spiritual world, a replica. And then the devotees is also a gift of the devotees because mm. they are giving us that freedom. Now, please, let's carry on about Prabhupada. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I feel like we should continue on Vrindavan. Um, no, my, train of thought was, well. <laughs> yeah, my train of thought was going down, experiencing um, the gifts of a person such as Prabhupada, um, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, um, now that he is no longer, for those of you that are watching that don't know, he is no longer with us here in this world. Um, he left the planet in uh, 1977. And in so doing, a void was left. A lot of people who uh, were avid followers of the Hare Krishna movement, of the Bhakti movement at the time, felt a big vacuum in their lives. And I think that this is something which is currently uh, a hot topic because it seems like there's a guru on every corner. You know, on Instagram nowadays, it seems like everyone's giving advice. Everyone has become a self-professed guru. Um, mm. And so I guess the question is in two parts. One is how to uh, discern, how to differentiate between whether someone is a real guru or not. And secondly, mm -hmm. how to keep connected with the spiritual teacher, the spiritual master uh, after they're gone, after they have um, left their mm -hmm. physical presence from us. Uh, there are many teachers in the world who can teach us about life, mm -hmm. and undoubtedly. Many people can teach us about life. And we can learn from, uh, from ordinary people, so-called ordinary people, because who is ordinary? Uh, in one sense, nobody is ordinary. Everyone is special. So in, we can learn from everyone. We can learn something from everyone. Still, although we learn from good things from many people, it doesn't make them our lifetime teacher because maybe they cannot teach us everything uh, that we need to improve every aspect of our life mm -hmm. and a lifetime teacher should be able to teach us that he should be able to teach us 
how to improve every aspect of our life. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, you know, life is meant for perfection. You know, uh, in my days of songwriting, you know, one was called The Compromise because my father told me, son, life is a compromise. And oh boy, I really didn't like that, you know. And it's maybe for you, but not for me. <laughs> and, uh, and even now, I would say, no, life cannot be a compromise. We must, um, life has become a compromise when we give up looking for perfection. But this idealism, you know, of like trying to get perfection should be there. A real life teacher, uh, not just someone who teaches or something, good, but a real life teacher is one who will um, step by step lift us up towards becoming perfect more and more. Better, better, better. Growth, um, ongoing growth. And uh, that growth, it may begin with ourselves. It may begin with uh, becoming uh, a more moral person, becoming more kind, becoming more, uh, more honest. Um, these are virtues, and our development begins there. But after we've developed such qualities, then we have to grow more. We have to grow more. And we have to see as to what is the ultimate goal of, of, of this world? What is, the, uh, what is the purpose of life? Is it just here? Is it just to be kind? Is it just to be friendly to my neighbors? Is it just, is it about loving people? Is that the ultimate meaning of life? No. Or is there a still greater purpose? We see people, you know, I was in Calcutta also. And Calcutta is sometimes known as a black hole in the universe. You know, I hope there's no one from Calcutta here, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Calcutta is also a very cultural place in so many ways, but you have to find it as, as an outsider. You'll first see a lot of, uh, of poverty and I have seen doctors working in Calcutta and I have seen they their waiting rooms were full the corridors were full the garden was full with patients bandits up and blood stains and this and that and working so hard and when I saw these doctors well then I thought wow these people they are really doing something. Mm. They are not just making it easy for themselves. They are totally giving themselves, right? Day in, day out for the welfare of others. Mm. And then I was thinking, yes, these doctors are, are great personalities. I saw something greater than just developing some good moral qualities in myself. I saw people that make a sacrifice for the welfare of others. They were greater. Then, but yes, one day I was in a temple giving a talk and then there was a man and he, he introduced himself as being such a doctor. And then he said, he said that he said, oh, you are doing greater welfare work than, than me. 
And I said, no, 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 no. I said, you know, you're making such a sacrifice. You're making such a sacrifice. I said, what I'm doing uh, is insignificant. He said, no. But it's not only about the sacrifice, but also what are you making the sacrifice for? Hmm. And he's saying, I am, I am like, just like a mechanic who's fixing cars. I'm fixing the bodily machine. He uh, said, but you, you are working for the welfare of the soul. Mm. And the welfare of the soul is more important than the welfare of the temporary body. Because the soul is eternal. That doctor was uh, was deep. deep. <laughs> it was deep, <laughs> and uh, impressed me. Impressed me very much. But, but it's true. It was mm -hmm. true that the welfare of the soul is more important than the welfare of the body. So a real life teacher should teach us about the the welfare of the soul, and should teach us about our eternal destination. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. I think that sums up for anyone that's listening and is searching for a teacher who they can invest their faith, their time with. Is, is this person, at the very basic level, are they um, looking for the welfare of the soul? And are they actively doing that? Um, being a person who is a guru themselves, are there any challenges that come with that? Is it, a, is it a role that you desired? Is it something um, which people should aspire for, do you think? Mm. Ah, no, no. Be, being a guru uh, is, is the most challenging thing that one could try to do in this world. And nothing is more challenging. It's more challenging than being a doctor in Calcutta. Um, it, it, because, uh, because it has to be real. One cannot play any role. It will not work if one plays a role. So as I left off saying that a real life teacher, a real guru must teach about the welfare of the soul and not just the body. Well, one thing is this. The soul is who we are. And the soul is never alone. Just like now, we're not alone. Now, um, you know, I'm looking at this screen and it's interesting because I've never used this Instagram. This is a new experience for me. But it's interesting to have a conversation like this and to sort of uh, look at uh, at Radhika there at, on top of the screen. And see, see <laughs> it should myself. be the other way around, but I can't change it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> see myself, you know, where I belong at the bottom, and uh, you know, and uh, there's relationship. Yeah? So this Instagram is is nice because there's relationship here, and this is one of the things that's been uh, very frustrating in all this screen is, is streaming that I'm all the time talking to the screen, you know, my dear screen. Yeah? And, <laughs> so this time there's a person on the other side of the screen, which is actually nice. Mm. So mm. we are always in relationship. When I talk alone to a screen, I feel uh, I, something is very sterile and something is very kind of cold. When I look at just my Facebook friends, right, I'm hankering to meet people face to face. Mm -hmm. It's like relationship. We are always in relationship. So a real relationship is not just the temporary friendships of this world, but is also an eternal relationship, a relationship on the, on the level of the soul, a relationship with the Supreme Lord. Mm -hmm. um, and there Krishna comes in, a relationship with Krishna. Because he is ultimately 
the sweetest manifestation of God. Uh, there are all kinds of divine manifestations. But ultimately, what can really capture us, right, is Krishna's amazing personal dealings by which he is aiming to capture the heart of his devotee. And he does so by, uh, by playing with his devotees. Oh, he's not sitting there saying, worship me. No, no, he's playful. And he just churns the hearts and brings out attachment of his devotees. So that discovery of Krishna is ultimately the most confidential secret. It is Rajavijam, Rajaguyam. It is the secret of transcendental knowledge. I shouldn't touch my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you guys have all got the secret, so be careful who I you tell. I have to first, I first disinfect my finger. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so the ultimate secret is that we, uh, yeah, is to have a very intimate uh, relationship with not just human beings, but with God also, with Krishna. Mm -hmm. A very heart-to-heart -heart one. And that is what a guru should teach. Mm -hmm. So then he has to have it also. He has to live it. He has to... Tr so, guru means to always search, always search for that heart-to-heart -heart with Krishna. Always, always looking for that by giving to Krishna. Then, let's see what will happen in the yeah. relationship. Yeah, I think that this is something which... Um... It's so important to hear for anyone that is looking for a spiritual teacher or is thinking about sharing to others that this concept that your cup has to be full. You need to be deeply absorbed. You need to be uh, someone who uh, has fallen in love with God, with divinity, with Krishna, with grace. And in that way, only will it come out in a way where people, and I think people can tell it's a subtle thing, but even if you're not a spiritualist, it's often quite obvious when someone is, regardless of their dress, regardless of how they look, it's often quite clear, even to those who are uh, just touching the surface, to see whether someone is practicing what they preach, practicing what they, oh, a change of hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's better for the weather? No, well, regardless how they look, so I thought. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you had me there. Um, yeah, regardless of how they look, regardless of what they, um, yeah, the point is, are they deeply absorbed is, is the question. Um, what do you do on a daily basis to keep yourself deeply absorbed? Do you have any uh, a daily practice of your own? Um, well, I, I do many things, you know. I, uh, I have uh, early in the morning, I rise mm -hmm. and... Uh, I take my bath so that I am clean and I chant. Mm -hmm. I, I, I peacefully chant the, the Maha Mantra. Uh, I, uh, I also have uh, a shila, a stone from Govardhan. Is it possible I to see? Worship. worship. Uh, yeah, I have to just... Uh, okay. If you, if you double tap on the screen, it'll flip the camera around. Oh my God! <laughs> I can just take the whole thing over. I mean, that's yeah, easier yeah. than flipping the camera around. I mean, you yeah. just tell me if you if 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 you see what you're meant to see. I can see, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so I much. have to bring down my tripod, huh? Because I'm too <laughs> high. One moment. I think I have to take a thing out of the tripod. Okay. Wonderful. Are, we, are you seeing now? Yeah. A little bit lower and we can see the Sheila. You see it properly? 
not the Sheila. We can see the picture of Rade Sham Sundar. Okay. And almost, almost, almost wonderful. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry for being so clumsy with these things, you know. That's okay. Not at all. But it's interesting because maybe you can share a little bit about your, your puja practice. And oh, I don't know if he's still here. You're back. Wonderful. Yep, I'm back. No, I was yeah. just saying that we have this um, okay, daily session where we chant uh, japa, we meditate together. Um, and part of that is I suggest that everyone has a sacred space, an altar. Um, and so maybe you can share a little bit about your morning routine. And you were speaking about the Sheila, so maybe you can continue. Yeah, you know, the sacred space, right, mm -hmm. is, is a, is a, is a in, very important thing. Of course, you know, uh, the, the, the concept sacred space is, is, uh, is, is, is a cliche these days. But uh, still, you know, everyone needs nourishment, right? And everyone is seeking for that. And home is supposed to be that place. You know, you go home to get nourished, right? Mm. You, you just, uh, after you've been out there, you're going, you're going home, ha ha, for, you know, some rejuvenation, you know, whatever it is, you know, take off the tie, whew, or kick the shoes off, you hoo I'm home, <laughs> right? And uh, like this, right? Uh, and then, not just relaxation, but positive, positive things also at home, right? For example, if the pictures on the wall are not just pictures, but if the pictures on the wall are pictures that speak to you, you know, mm -hmm. pictures that really, that you love, and each time you see that picture again, you just think like, wow, this is wonderful. And if at the same time that picture is full of spiritual meaning, mm -hmm. oh, then that, that picture is giving you so much spiritual, sacred energy. And that sacred energy, well, it will give you immunity, you know, immunity from all the, all the things that are lurking out there and that are entering into the consciousness. Uh, just like uh, we are worried about what we are inhaling, right? Uh, but what about what enters into our consciousness? Because mm -hmm. in, the, in the Bhagavatam, there's an interesting thing where it says that uh, the mind goes into the things and the things go into the mind. And then the things are in the mind and we carry them around so many things. Um, so we need that spiritual nourishment and that we need at home. So I try to create an atmosphere where I get that spiritual nourishment and I reserve the morning for that and a good chunk of time in the morning before I start dealing with the day. You know, the day, uh, things to do, right? Like at the moment, I'm thinking of coming to Europe. I'm in South Africa, but there are no flights, but maybe some repatriation thing. Then I'm looking, you know, is there any way I can get on, on some flight? Then I have to do business. Uh, uh, you know, I, I was ringing the Qatar office and then it's press one, right? <clears throat> you know, music <laughs> playing and the whole thing business but the morning no the morning is sacred in the morning only sacred sound i will speak only sacred sound i will hear only sacred sound and in that way i go into the day well nourished full of strength then my heart is full my consciousness is full and all the whatever crazy influences or whatever other influences there are, they just bounce off because the heart is full. But when the heart is empty and no, no nourishment, then all these things are penetrating deep, deep into our consciousness. 
And then the result is, is that we carry them with us. So mm. many things. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, due to time, Instagram only allows us one hour and then <laughs> cut off time. So we're coming close Ooh. to the end. Um, but I want to thank first and foremost, all the people that have been watching, that have been listening. Thank you so much, Tommy. Oh, I don't know if you remember Maharaj. We went to Varsana and Tommy was there with Charlie. And oh. so he's listening here. Thank you for joining us, Tommy. Joanna, Tommy. thank you so much. Very good. Yes. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Uh, thank I just, you so much. I just yeah, heard another translation of Varsana and it says Varsha means rain and Na means Anant, so where it, in, which is happiness. So where it's raining happiness. Yes. Wow, that's transcendental. I'm going to remember that. Ashana, thank you so much for sharing. Um, but thank you for everyone that was listening. Thank you for being here, for taking time to be with us. Nima, it's good to see you here. Sham Kumar, thank you so much for joining us from Dubai. Uh, Joanna, I really appreciate you tuning in and for sharing all your wonderful comments. To Kusum, to uh, Tirumala, so many wonderful people that are here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and of course, to our um, guest on today's conversation is Holiness Kadamakana Swami, who for me is beyond all the accolades and all the amazing things that he's doing to serve others. He is uh, like a father figure. I, I really trust him. I really look up to him, for example, of how to become a custodian of faith. And um, he's an inspiration. So please do keep in touch with all the teachings that he's giving either via online, well, that's the only way right now, but if he gets his ticket yeah. to Europe, then I'll let you guys all know when he's here. Maybe we can do yeah. something. You can catch me at Media Kadamba Kanana Swami on YouTube. That's what I use ah. as a streaming platform. Okay, Media Kadamba Kanana Swami. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. If someone can write that in the comments so then anyone else can check that out, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Um, and yeah, thank you so much, Maharaj. I really appreciate your time. Um, any closing words you want to share before they cut us off in the next two minutes? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's wonderful. I, I also see names flashing by on the screen. And many, many people that I'm connected to uh, are also uh, here. And it's, it's just wonderful. I think that... Uh, it is all Krishna's arrangement, all Krishna's plan that we are now associating in this way. And let us just uh, just make the best of it. And uh, in some ways, we're getting more more attention than we than we usually get. In other ways, less. Of course, I'm hankering for that big kirtan with like <laughs> <laughs> many, Me many too. devotees. <laughs> Me too. These living room kirtans are okay, but no, I, want, <laughs> uh, I want like a, a big kirtan. Um, yeah. So I'm waiting for that. Meanwhile, but I'm also enjoying just mm -hmm. kirtan by myself because it brings out another mood, actually. Mm -hmm that's when I become quite meditative. And, uh, uh, you know, unlike the old rock swami, rocking swami. Um, so uh, I enjoy also the introspection that this time offers. And I think it's valuable for all of us, uh, some introspection. And let's use this to develop more of a vision of 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 where we're going and where do we want to go let's think this is a time to think mm -hmm. thank you very much thank you very much thank you so much with your permission we will now sign off thank you all for watching and i will definitely ask Maharaj to try and do another one of these one day in the future uh, but until then thank you all so much for watching and see you all next time all the best Hare Bo. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Ancha kalpatu vya cha kripasana vya cha patitana vya pavanini vaisna vya